Akira and the Unicorns. Thunder rumbled. The magical rainbow forest shook. An army was on the way, and galloping hooves could be heard getting closer and closer. In the peaceful plains, no one knew of the evil that was to come. Time was running out. Talking of time, in a very non-magical kitchen, a very non-magical girl was looking at a pocket watch. The girl was called Kira, and the pocket watch was left to her by her grandfather. The silver case was incredibly shiny, and it had a large crystal on the top, which caught the light and sent it glittering across the room, and when the light was very bright, it could also throw little rainbows onto the walls too. The sun was dazzling today, and Kira wanted to make the biggest rainbow she could, and so held the pocket watch high towards the window. Her mum saw her playing, and reminded her of something very important. Be careful, Kira. You know you must never look at the sun, or any bright lights. It can blind you. Kira knew better than that. Anyway, she just liked the rainbows. And wow, the rainbow thrown against the wall was a big one. A really big one. Like, bigger than the wall. Mum didn't seem to have noticed, but then Kira felt her feet leaving the floor, but she was floating towards the rainbow, and whoosh! Through the rainbow she went, and when she opened her eyes, she found herself in a very strange place. A beautiful world full of rainbows. And... What were they? Unicorns! Okay, before we go on, I have a question for you. Do you think unicorns exist? Maybe you think it's sort of made up. Well, I can tell you with absolute certainty, as Kira's has just found out, they do exist. Not here on Earth, but in their own magical realm. A place called Unicornia, which you can travel to if you jump through a rainbow. I mean, the name sort of tells you that you're going to find some unicorns there, right? But whatever you're imagining, you're not going to imagine this. This lush... Verdant rainbow realm is dappled with sunlight filtering through the leafy canopy, casting a kaleidoscope of light on the soft moss-covered ground. Here, the air is filled with a serene harmony as a myriad of unique unicorns grace the land. From the sort of unicorn you probably recognise, you know, looks like a horse with a horn on its head. Here in Unicornia, you'll also find the dainty kitty unicorns, with their soft fur and gentle purrs, majestic tiger unicorns too, whose striped coats shimmer in the sun, and even fluttering against the blooms are tiny bee unicorns. So you get it. Every creature has a horn, whether big or small. It was a lovely place, with tranquil streams that meandered through the landscape, whispering secrets to the ancient stones and nurturing the lush flora, and the animals lived in harmony. Kira gasped in amazement as she stared around, the unicorns peering at her cautiously and then coming for a closer look. Are you from Earth? twittered a tiny sparacorn. Kira stuttered a yes, nodding nervously. A large unicorn of the traditional variety, horse, came over. Oh, please don't be scared. Star Mane at your service. He bowed slowly. We had a visitor from Earth. You look rather familiar, actually. Allow me to show you our world. Kira, with eyes wide with wonder, followed Star Mane, his coat dancing with iridescent colours as they explored the glittering forest, where trees whispered ancient secrets and the crystal lake, mirroring the sky's infinite canvas. Drink from the water. It's delicious. Kira hesitated and then cupped her hands to drink. It will taste of your favourite thing. And yes, strawberry milk. The clear water tasted just like strawberry milk. The unicorn's gentle trot led them through the blossom meadows, awash with flowers that changed colours as they swayed in the wind. Each landmark shimmered with its own magic, stories unfolding beneath their hooves. The unicorn, with a wisdom as deep as the stars, shared tales of each wondrous sight, its horn aglow, casting a soft light to illuminate their path. It was evening, and they were resting. Suddenly there was a whinny, and the thud of paws. It was a tiger corn out of breath as he approached Kira and Starmane. What's the matter? said Starmane. 
it's Nocturne Thorn and his shadow army. They're nearly at the Rainbow Waterfall. Kira looked confused. He's an evil unicorn, the last of the woolly mammoth unicorns. I mean, he would be terrifying enough just being massive and having two tusks the size of a tree each. But with a horn on his head, well, he's been trying to take over forever. Sorry, Kira, we must go and defend our land. The unicorns were running, scampering, and flapping away to defend the waterfall, and a dark cloud seemed to fall over the forest. Kira yelled, Take me with you! And Starmane, hesitating, then bowing his head, let her jump on his velvety back. A tiny kitty corn hopped on too, clutching at his mane with her tiny claws, and they were off. The battle was raging by the time they arrived, with the clash of horns, with magical beams coming from them crisscrossing like cannon shots, but it seemed to be of no use. The Shadow Army was just too powerful, and Nocturne himself was frankly absolutely terrifying. There's no two ways about it. Kira pulled out the silver watch. She had an idea, and there was no time to lose. She pointed to a large rock the size of the waterfall. Take us there! Starmane was puzzled. I can dazzle the Shadow Army w with this, she said, pulling out the pocket watch. Starmane whinnied and took her to the high rock. Focus your beams there, she yelled, holding the pocket watch over her head. There was a rumble of whinnies and roars and a few meows too, chirrups even, and the unicorns did as she had demanded. The beams of light from a thousand horns shot towards the watch where they joined in a white hot beam of pure light energy hotter and brighter than a million suns. Kira looked towards Nocturne, and twisting the watch to direct the reflected beam, threw the beam into his eyes. He screamed in pain, staggering into the waterfall too, fell into a dead faint. His army didn't need much encouragement to retreat, as the reflected light beam dazzled and blinded one after another, until all that was left was the sound of the rainbow waterfall and the cheers of the creatures of Unicornia. You did it! You saved us! Well, he should know you should never look at their very bright lights, she shrugged with a giggle. And as for Nocturne, well, he was banished to the distant barren island of Poonopia, where, let's just say, all the manure from the unicorns ended up. Yeah, not nice. You might want to change your name to Poonicorn, said Starmane with Kira on his back, and Kitty Corn still hanging on too, and they laughed and laughed as they flew back to the forest through a huge glittering rainbow, and Kira found herself falling to the ground, landing back in the kitchen, holding the pocket watch with Mum. She rubbed her eyes and giggled. Mum hadn't even noticed that she'd been gone. She stared at the watch curiously. Mum looked over her and smiled. Certainly a strange thing that watch. Granny said Grandad never took it out of his pocket except to polish it in his shed once a week. Did you ever see him polish it? No, said Mum. He was very private about that watch. And Kira began to think that maybe, just maybe, Grandad had taken a few secret trips of his own. After all, Starmane had said she looked familiar, hadn't he? And that's the story of Kira and the unicorns. Do you think she ever went back? I think I would. Thank you to Eliana for coming up with our character this week. Kira, brilliant character, Eliana. Thank you very much. You can come up with your own weird and wonderful characters for our stories using the StoryQuest character creator over on the Fun Kids website. And now we go over to our story master this week. It's Esme. Esme, you are our story master this week. You wanted a story about unicorn, kitty corn, all the types of unicorns. Why do you love unicorns so much? Because they have magic. Where do they have magic, Esme? In the horns. In the horns, and they've got wings as well, right? Some of them do, some of them don't. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't know that you could get a unicorn without wings. Tell me, if you had a pet unicorn, what would you do with it? I think I would just like play with it. Well, if it's got magic, what would you do with that magic, do you think, when you're playing with it? I'd make chocolate fall from the sky. <laughs> You'd make it rain chocolate. Well, Esme, if you got on a unicorn that had the wings, 
magic so it can fly, where would you go with it? I would go onto a rainbow. Onto a rainbow? Well, that's so sparkly and so magical, Esme. I've loved chatting to you, and thank you so much for being our story master this week. Got an idea for a story? Tell us the title at funkidslive.com forward slash story quest and we could bring your story to life. For a new story each week, make sure you hit subscribe or follow so you don't miss a single episode.